This is example 2, 129. This is a shock absorber and is an underdamped system. A shock absorber is to be designed to limit the overshoot to 15% of its initial displacement when released. And we want to find the damping ratio required for that condition. Then we want to find the overshoot if we reduce that damping ratio in 3 4 and we want to also calculate that overshoot if we increase our damping ratio to 5 4 Recall the overshoot, the displacement, before it rebounds. It will be the amplitude in half cycle. In this case, we want that amplitude to be 15% of the initial, so that's 0.15, the initial displacement or the initial condition of the system. This is this dimension right here. To relate two amplitudes in an underdamped system, we will use the logarithmic decrement, which is defined as the logarithm of two consecutive amplitudes. In this case, we will have the initial condition and the half cycle amplitude. However, since these are two consecutive uh, amplitudes of a whole cycle, we have to divide by n, which is in this case one half, to be able to relate those two amplitudes. So in general, we want to relate two amplitudes that are not consecutive in one cycle, we have to divide by n, which is the number of cycles. In this case, will be one half because we want to relate the initial displacement with the the displacement a half of the cycle. So we write the command logarithm of one half, logarithm of the initial displacement, which is x zero, over the displacement at one cycle, which is 15, the initial displacement. That gives me a value of 3.794. Logarithmic decrement x equals 2 to pi zeta over square root of 1 minus zeta squared. If we solve for zeta, we have the logarithm decrement divided by the square root of 2 pi squared plus the logarithmic decrement. And if we plug on the numbers, that is 3.794 divided by the square root of 2 pi squared. 0.794 square, and that gives me a value for zeta equals to 0 0.5164. As you see, that value is less than 1. That's an under-damped system. Now that we have our damping ratio to have that overshoot of 0.15% of the initial displacement, Let's see what happens if we reduce that damping ratio in 3 fourth. So we have a new damping ratio that is less. So what do you think would happen? If we have less damping, we can predict that our overshoot will be a little bit bigger. So let's try to see if that's what happens. So we calculate again our logarithmic decrement. In this case, we have the damping ratio, so we substitute is 2 pi times the new damping ratio divided by the square root of 1 minus the damping ratio squared. That gives me a value of 2.6426. The definition of logarithmic decrement for cycles that are not consecutive in one cycle, we have to divide one zero point five. And now we solve for that overshoot. So we have to 
take the exponential in both sides of the equation and then we get the exponential of 0 0.5 the logarithmic decrement equals to x0 over x1 half and then x1 half will be equals to x0 divided by the exponential of 0 0.5 times the logarithmic decrement and we calculate that and we get that the x1 half is 0 0.2676 so that means that is 26% of the initial displacement. So in the first case, we had that it was only 15%, so it was a bigger reduction with less. That being, we have less reduction. So if we graph this again, we see that the displacement at half of the cycle, which is the red graph, is bigger. This is 26% of the initial displacement. And with the initial zeta, which was 0 0.51, the overshoot was 15% of the initial displacement. Let's do now part B, in which case we will increase our damping ratio to 5 fourth, which is then the damping ratio is equal to 0 0.6461. And we do the same procedure as calculating our logarithmic decrement, 2 pi times zeta divided by the square root of 1 minus zeta squared and the decrement logarithm is 5.3194. And we have to solve again for our overshoot, which is the amplitude of the half cycle. And I will use the same equation that we already have, which is the initial amplitude divided by the exponential to 0 0.5 and the logarithmic decrement. That gives me a value of 0 0.07, the initial amplitude. It means that it's only 7% of the initial value. That means that the reduction is even bigger. If we graph this, which is now the green graph, as you see, I will have a less amplitude of a half value, and that is because I have a greater damp. So damping means dissipation of energy. So there is a reduction in amplitude for each cycle, and in this case it's a big reduction only in half cycle because the damping is very high. Here I just reduce the screens for you to see the whole problem.